In the future, ecological disasters and global conflicts devastate modern civilization, transforming North America into the nation of Panem. Panem is divided into a central district called the capital, home to the wealthy, and 13 surrounding districts tasked with providing economic and material resources. The capital's harsh treatment of the district sparks a civil war, the first rebellion led by District 13. After three years of fighting, the rebellion fails with the destruction of District 13, ushering in an era known as the Dark Days. During these dark days, two upper-class children are running through deserted streets, searching for food. Suddenly, a wild dog finds them and the boy throws something to distract it while they escape. They hide behind a statue and witness a man cutting up a body to eat. They return home to their grandmother, who brings bad news. The boy's father has been killed by rebels in District 12. Three years later, the Dark Days end with the capital creating the Treaty of Treason to ensure peace. Part of the treaty includes the annual Hunger Games, a brutal competition where two teens from each district must fight to the death to remind the districts that the Dark Days must not be repeated. Ten years after the treaty, the boy Coriolanus lives with his grandmother and his cousin Tigris. Their family status has declined after losing their factory during the war, and now they live in poverty. To maintain appearances and avoid being expelled from the capital, Coriolanus studies hard at the academy, hoping to win a university scholarship and escape a menial job. As the 10th Hunger Games approach, Coriolanus joins the mentor program, assisting one of the tributes from the districts. Head game maker Gaul introduces Dean Casca, the creator of the games and a serious addict. Since viewership of the games has declined, Casca wants mentors to focus on making their tributes entertain the audience rather than win. Now, the scholarship prize will go to the best mentor, not the one with the best grades. They watch the reaping ceremony on big screens, showing a boy and a girl being chosen from each district. Casca assigns each chosen face to a student, and Coriolanus is upset to be assigned the girl from District 12. Lower districts are known for their poverty, and their tributes usually die quickly in the games. The chosen girl Lucy makes her way to the stage and pauses to put a snake down the blouse of Mayfair, who made fun of her. The mayor hits Lucy for harming his daughter, and the guards known as peacekeepers have to take him away. The public begins singing to support Lucy, and she stands up to sing along defiantly, adding an insult at the end, which makes everyone laugh. Coriolanus sees her potential. Later, all the tributes are brought to the capital by train, and Coriolanus welcomes Lucy with a flower to gain her trust. However, Lucy isn't impressed and eats a petal. Another tribute causes trouble, and while the guards are distracted, Coriolanus sneaks into the truck taking the tributes to their quarters. The group doesn't like seeing a fancy guy among them, and Reaper threatens to kill him, which the others support. However, Lucy stops them, pointing out they'll be executed if they do so. Suddenly, the truck stops and the group is thrown into a cage. The tributes are put in a zoo for visitors to view as if they were exotic animals. A reporter notices Coriolanus among them and asks for an interview, so he steps forward with Lucy to make a good impression. Lucy charms the children, explaining she isn't originally from District 12 but from a nomadic group that got stuck there after the war. Coriolanus is also charming to the camera, but soon the peacekeepers come to take him away. Before he leaves, Lucy asks him to get them some food because some haven't eaten for days. Back at the academy, Casca scolds Coriolanus for breaking the rules, but Gaul thinks it was a smart move. His best friend Sejanus takes the opportunity to complain about the games being immoral and how the tributes are not seen as people. Coriolanus comes up with an idea, they should let the public know the tributes before the games. This way, viewers will care more about watching the show because they'll have someone to root for. They could even start letting people bet on the tributes. Gaul tells him to write a proposal for it. After class, Coriolanus and Sejanus bring food to the tributes in the zoo. Sejanus' tribute Marcus is wary and doesn't accept it, but Lucy takes the offering from Coriolanus. He's displeased when she shares it with the others, but they still get to chat and bond. Nearby, a tribute is being taunted by her mentor with some water. She takes the bottle from her mentor and uses it to stab the mentor in the throat. Everyone runs away in fear, but Coriolanus rushes to his classmate's side, watching her die before the peacekeepers take him away and shoot the tribute to death. The next day, Coriolanus hands in his proposal, which includes the idea of viewers being able to send supplies to the tributes via donations. During class, Casca announces that in the evening, there will be a televised presentation of the tributes, so he gives the mentors an hour with them to discuss strategies. Casca wants Lucy to sing to win people over, so she asks him for a guitar. Afterward, Coriolanus is called to Gaul's office, and his classmate Clemencia comes along because they're class partners. 
Gaul's office is full of mutated animals in jars, and she introduces them to a tank of special rainbow snakes she's been breeding. Clemencia tries to claim credit for the whole proposal and Gaul reveals it has fallen inside the tank. She asks Clemencia to retrieve it, these snakes won't attack someone if they're used to their smell, but since the paper doesn't have Clemencia's scent, the snakes bite her as soon as she puts her hand inside. While the assistants provide an antidote, Gaul tells Coriolanus she approves his proposal. Sometime later, the mentors and the tributes are given 15 minutes inside a huge dome, which will be the arena for the games. Suddenly, multiple explosions begin blowing up the walls around them, and soon the ceiling is destroyed as well, causing debris to fall. Many people are killed while some tributes try to use the chance to escape, but Coriolanus gets trapped under the debris. Thankfully, Lucy comes back and frees him as his jacket catches on fire, but then the peacekeepers take her away and Coriolanus faints. He later wakes up in the hospital with Sejanus and Tigris by his side. They explain it was a rebel bombing, which killed four tributes and put a mentor on life support. Marcus has escaped and the peacekeepers are chasing him but Sejanus thinks he's safer that way. At that moment, the tribute presentation starts on TV and Coriolanus watches Lucy sing a beautiful song with her guitar, making many viewers cry. Afterward, Coriolanus goes to the destroyed dome to understand the layout for future plans and discovers a few hidden tunnels. When he returns home, he sees a dead rat and realizes the poison they use is quite strong. He takes some of it and hides it in his deceased mother's compact mirror. He then goes to the zoo and tells Lucy about all the potential hiding places in the dome, giving her the mirror. He swears he wants her to survive, and Lucy cries as she tries to kiss him, but he moves his lips away and cleans her face with his handkerchief. The next day, the remaining tributes are taken to the arena while the mentors gather at the academy with Casca and the show host, who has an envelope with his prediction of the winner. As the peacekeepers push the tributes to their starting spots, they discover Marcus has been caught and is now hanging on the dome as a warning. This causes Sejanus to snap, and he calls everyone monsters before leaving the academy. After a countdown, the games finally begin, and the tributes run all over the place. Some try to stay safe, while others immediately start attacking each other. While one of his classmates pukes at the sight of so much violence, Coriolanus wishes Lucy would run and hide, but she stays to find Jessup, her fellow District 12 tribute. As players die one by one, their mentors leave the academy in a huff. Lucy does her best to dodge all incoming attacks, and when she sees Jessup, she tries to run to him but her way keeps getting blocked by attackers. Thankfully, she dodges them too and reaches Jessup, who looks rather sick because he was beaten by a bat on their way to the capital. Lucy immediately takes him into one of the tunnels where there are cameras too. Soon, more tributes come down to chase after them so the duo sneaks through a hole in a locked door. A tribute reaches inside to grab Jessup's leg, but at that moment, more tributes show up in the corridor and kill the ones already there, including the one in the hole. Then the attackers consider getting into the hole too, but they're worried Lucy might kill them, so they go back to the main area. For a few hours, nothing happens as the tributes hide to make a plan. Some people in the academy even fall asleep while the host starts telling the weather. Suddenly, Lamina comes out to check on Marcus, who is still alive and asking for mercy. Using an axe, Lamina kills him, which earns her some donations. Her mentor sends her a bottle of water, but the drone crashes and the bottle breaks in front of her. That night, vultures come down to feed on the bodies in the arena. While Coriolanus watches the screens, Casca comes to tell him he'll do anything to prevent him from winning, so he better act fast. In the tunnel, Lucy finds water for Jessup but he refuses it. Hours later, Coriolanus is awoken by Gaul, who asks him to handle Sejanus, who is mourning Marcus in the arena. Gaul promises a reward if Coriolanus helps. He finds Sejanus and warns him that if he dies here, Gaul will claim it was an illness. They are chased by a tribute, and Coriolanus kills him. More tributes appear, but they escape in time. Sejanus' parents are grateful, and Coriolanus tells Tigris about killing someone feeling both awful and powerful. The next day, Coriolanus and Tigris attend the academy, the host announces another tribute died, leaving ten. Jessup, delirious, attacks Lucy, but she escapes. Coriolanus realizes Jessup has rabies and sends water, which startles Jessup, causing his death. Lucy escapes with the water. The group targets Lamina, who is killed. Lucy poisons the group's water and hides. The group fights over the bottle, leading to more deaths. Reaper grieves and rebels. Gaul interrupts with news of the mentor's death, threatening to kill all tributes. Coriolanus guesses Gaul will use snakes and sneaks Lucy sent to the tank. In the arena, Lucy is attacked but uses rat poison to survive. Gaul's snakes kill the tributes, but spare Lucy, who sings to them. Coriolanus convinces Gaul to declare her the winner. 
Coriolanus is caught for breaking rules and assigned as a peacekeeper. He bribes his way to District 12, joined by Sejanus. They undergo strict training. At a bar, Coriolanus fights Billy to protect Lucy. The next day, they kiss and meet secretly at a lake. Coriolanus wants to return to the capital, but Lucy prefers to stay. Coriolanus excels in tests and is reassigned to District 2, promising to help his family. He records Sejanus conspiring with rebels, leading to Sejanus' execution. Coriolanus plans to escape with Lucy, but she disappears, leaving only her bracelet. He throws a tantrum and fires wildly before giving up. Coriolanus is transferred to the capital, gifted a university spot by Sejanus' parents. He poisons Casca and begins training with Gaul, eventually becoming President Snow, Katniss' enemy.